hi in this video we're going to continue creating some materials we're going to start um replicating some sample materials so i've have a scene 08 begin it has the sphere the plane and the same lights we've been using so the first material we're going to try to replicate it's some kind of metallic paint or something that you could use for a car body or something like that so with my sphere selected i'm gonna right click assign new material and we're going to create a blend as always so with my blend material i just started my so sometimes it's a little bit slow at the beginning okay here we go so we can call this metallic paint blend and let's open our hyper shade so we can start connecting things okay here we are so I'm gonna grab this guy let's make this bigger so we can see what's going on and I'm gonna create a first material which we could call these um, like base paint or base coat and I'm gonna create some nodes that I know for a fact I will be using a lot so the first one as you guys have noticed is the sampler info the sampler info it's an extremely useful node I'm gonna create my reverse do the connections we've always been doing so my facing ratio to any of my inputs and then a remap and connect that input which was X to my input value and I'm gonna go ahead and do my out value to my reflection color amount so this is what we've been doing for our own reflectance curves but one other thing I want to do is that um, a lot of uh, paint materials that are based on metals or that have some kind of metal component have a very interesting effect and is that as the based on the angle of view sometimes the diffuse color what we call the diffuse color will slightly change so to do that the easiest way that we can do is just come and create a ramp I'm gonna get rid of my place 2d node we don't need it and I'm gonna use my facing ratio and plug it as my u coordinate so facing ratio U or V either way so you can connect them to both and now here I'm gonna get rid of the middle color and let's just plug this to the diffuse so you see what's going on so we have blue in front and red on the side we don't want it to be that extreme so we can actually for the front color let's pick like a nice darker red that's a nice color maybe a little bit more saturation without it being 100% saturated a little bit darker excellent and now for a rim color if you open here it's gonna be on your last color selected and we can change it just by changing a tiny bit the hue I don't want to change much of the saturation or the darkness I just want to change the hue there we go now plug this guy into our base material and give it a render just to see what the diffuse is doing we are not gonna see any reflection yet because our reflection color is still at black but we're just gonna see a little bit of what's going on with the diffuse so actually one of the things I'm gonna do is move this guy way out of our screen so you it's not bothering you so this is the effect that I was telling you it's maybe too strong right now we can come and make it a little bit more subtle so I'm gonna open this guy and move this maybe there so it's a very subtle actually let me double click so I have con complete control so let's try 0.875 ah. actually nope here let's bring okay this is 360 so let's bring this down a tiny bit maybe 345 okay that looks a little bit better then we can always come and start changing it but I just want to be able 
to have just a tiny effect that the hue is changing. Okay, I like that. Now let's start working with the reflection. I might come back and adjust a little bit that hue change, but in the meanwhile, let's keep working on our reflection. So with this selected, I'm gonna come to my reflection, turn this to white, and adjust our graph. So with our graph open, I'm gonna give it um, a metallic paint. It's a little bit tricky because it's not 100% metal, but it's not 100% um, dielectric material. So it's usually a little bit of a combination of both. It's somehow between like a polycarbonate and an aluminum or whatever it's based. So we're gonna give it a Fresnel effect with a lot of initial reflection. I'm gonna come and draw my curves as we always do. Put our interpolation to splines. Have a little bit of this complete Brewster's angle or complete internal uh, reflection angle that before it, tar it starts going up, we have um, like a little bit of down before it starts going up. So I'm just gonna adjust this, so it looks a little bit softer. I think that's good. We can always come and start adjusting our curves. There's actually uh, a couple tutorials online on how to create a Python script that w given, if you give both of the index of reflections, like in their index of refractions or reflectance based on in their index of refractions, always work taking into account both mediums. Um, we're gonna, usually we consider that the first medium, which is sir, it's gonna have an index of refraction of one, and then you have the second medium, which would be your object. And there's actually some scripts out there, some Python scripts that will help you create that Maya remap um, graph. I still like doing it by hand because sometimes you can force and exaggerate some of the effects. So with this given, let's just give it a try and see how this renders. Okay, so it's almost what we would expect like on a Fresnel reflection, let's say if we had an IOR of like 2.5 or 3, something like that. We get a lot of front reflections, but we're getting a lot more of those side reflections. The first thing we're going to do is adjust our glossiness. So this first paint, this first paint coat, it's going to be a little bit coarse and we don't want it to be that... Um, clear in our reflections. So I'm going to change this to Word and bring my glossiness down to 0.8 maybe. Just render it, see how it looks. Okay, that's kind of what I was going for. We're going to have some broad speculars, not very defined, not very um, sharp. But this is kind of what I'm looking for. Actually, one of the things I'm going to do is that I'm going to bring down a tiny bit my reflection color. We can do it here, or the proper way would be to come and adjust our graph. Just bring these numbers down. We're still going to end at one. That happens in almost every single material in life but we're just gonna bring down the numbers in between. Re-render again, see what's going on. Okay, I just wanted to bring down, sometimes a lot of these changes are very subtle, but the more you work, the more you're used to, the more you train your eye, the easier it's gonna start realizing this, those subtle changes. So I'm gonna leave this here in the meanwhile. I'm not gonna do anything else. Maybe I'll come back in a little bit. But the first thing I wanna do is, usually paint materials will have that first uh, coat, which is usually based of some kind of carbon uh, molecule mixed with metal, and then you usually will have on top of it a urinate or some other kind of um, petroleum-based coating that it's very glossy, very sh um, when glossy when I say glossy, I mean like very shiny, very fine reflections, and it's usually transparent. It's creating not no color at all. So to create that, I'm gonna just bring another Vera material. We can call this clear coat. 
and let me bring my diffuse color make it black I'm gonna bring this guy duplicated with the connections because we're gonna have a different curve for this reflection I'm gonna plug it my out value to my reflection color amount and this one I'm gonna have a way more defined specular it's gonna be I could go for bling I could go for word it doesn't really matter but I want to have a very thin coat and bring my glossiness to some probably something like 0.95 bring this to white there we go plug this as our code material zero and then just give it a render and see what it looks like so you can already see the change is not exactly what it looked like on the first one but the difference is that we get that first base material that has some kind of glossiness and then on top of it we have this clear code and you the speculars are going to look completely different because it's not going to be that only broad specular but it's also not going to be that just small defined specular but it's going to be a combination of both one of the things we can do even though it's not the realistic way to do it but it helps a lot is that we can come and plug this guy in the color here diffuse color so we don't lose um, the saturation and hue here and then just by adjusting this value if we bring it to one we're gonna have only that tiny spec but then we can start playing with this value so we can create exactly those that like two level specular that we wanted that's one of the ways we can do it the other way the other way that we can do is actually have these two guys with different speculars being almost exact um, replicas of each other and then on top of it have a very thin clear code so actually I'm gonna stop here and on the next video we'll finish this like metallic paint shader